Oh, baby, we're green. It's about 1040 a.m. on the East Coast, and we have the Russell up 3%, NASDAQ's up 3.3%. We have the S&P up 26 as the Dow is up one8 and the VIX is down 3.5%, as silver is up 3.5%, and gold is up 1.3%. So needless to say, guys, the markets are bouncing back in a major way, and we got to break them down in this video. We're going to go over some earnings, stocks I'm looking at, charts I'm liking. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your coffee, and let's dive into the video. And by the way, if you all find value, hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe and get your 15 stocks from Moomoo and your 12 stocks from Webull. Link down below. It's free money, and who doesn't like free money? And it also helps out the channel, guys. I appreciate you all, as always. And with that being said, let's dive into the video. So what a bounce back day. Look at this. On Friday, you guys probably know the markets did not do well. SPY was at about 357 bucks at close. And then earlier today at the all time or not the all time high, the intraday high, I'm mixing up my words here, guys. The intraday high was 368 bucks. So in other words, it went up about 3% from close pretty much to where it is right now, uh, close on Friday, and Triple Q, which tracks the NASDAQ 100, you guys probably know that, this was at about 260 at close on Friday, and now it's at about, when I'm filming this, almost 270, it's up over 3% from that point, so big, big move here, and a lot of this did come in the pre-market, uh, and, and a big chunk of it right at market open, and we've kind of been uh, flat, I don't want to say completely flat, but if I zoom in here on the intraday on Triple Q, we've kind of been coasting. I mean, sort of kind of flat, even though we did hit a high at about 10, 15, 30 minutes prior to me filming this video. Uh, but since that point, really, Triple Q has been consolidating. Same with SPY if I pull the intraday up and zoom in a little bit. So let's see what direction we get here on the intraday. This is very important because if I draw this out, Right now, we are in a bit of a wedge. You guys see that, right? So are we going to break and start going for that high from earlier today, about 30 minutes prior to me filming this, 368? Or are we going to end up dumping and then seeing a retracement down to the 180 SMA, maybe you know, right at 364-ish, 365? Which in that case... SPXS might be an option here, which goes up whenever the S&P 500 goes down. It's a 3x bear ETF. This could be one that we might be able to day trade, maybe make a little, uh, you know, 50 cents to a dollar per share on that. Maybe, um, you know, maybe more than that. But I'm trying to be conservative, uh, you know, here on a day trade. We shall see, guys. So, yeah, let's wait for direction. That's kind of what I'm doing here. And looks like it's starting to cool off. You know, the, the dump to the downside might not be... Uh, too far-fetched at this point as of now, the way that I'm seeing things forming uh, right now. So, yeah, let's see, guys. If Triple Q starts, you know, dumping under, let's say, um, you know, 268.50, 268 in general, we might have a little bit of a downwards move to that 180 SMA here, 266, 266.50, and that could be S triple Q right there. That could be an option uh, for that. You know, we could play the, you know, the downside on Triple Q with this bear ETF. So what do you guys think? I mean, let me know your thoughts in the comments. We are seeing a very strong day thus far here so far for the Bulls. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, you got to be careful at this point. If I zoom in here, actually not, not zoom in, but just show you guys what's going on on this 20 day chart. We are still technically at a lower high here. I mean, do you guys not see this? We're technically at a point where this could be a bull trap, 100%. I mean, if if we fail here at about 268 or 368, 370 on SPY, we're probably going to be dumping, you know, at that point, right? If Triple Q fails at, which it is right now, mind you, but if we if we continue to fail here at 270, we fail to break the highs from Friday, which were at about 273, well, we're, we're going to start dumping to those points on the downside, 260, 255. You guys see my alerts here on the downside, right? So don't think bulls are all free and clear right now. They're not. I mean, they're not. They're just retesting the trend here that you can see on the 20-day. And we'll probably know later this week, you know, in, in the next couple of days, we're, we're going to get more, obviously, price action and more direction. But as of now, it's it's a bit risky here, in my opinion, to go long. If anything... I'm really looking at S triple Q and SPXS until the markets prove me or prove to me that they're going to be breaking out further, which again, SPY is going to need to get out of 372 for that. 
and Triple Q is going to need to get out of in the short term, 272 to about 273. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Drop me some comments down below. And let's talk about some of these stocks that I'm looking at. This one here, CLR is the ticker. This Continental, uh, it's Continental Resources, that's right. This popped on my radar today because look at it. I mean, it's up 8.5%. It's in the mid-70s, completely ripping on the day. And just in the past couple of weeks, I mean, this stock was $61 about a month ago, not even. Yeah, 20 days ago, it's up 17%, 18%. From that point, so if we look here on the four-hour chart, guys, we have, what is this? An ascending triangle, right? You know, clear as day. And we also have an inverse head and shoulders here that played out with today's breakout. So this looks really bullish. And you might be saying to yourself, it's pretty overbought, right? Which it is. It is a little bit in the short term, which it might need to cool off, for, um, you know, in the next couple of days or maybe later today. Who knows? But at some point, we're going to need to test 75, which we're doing right now. But, but we're going to... We're going to need to watch the stock to see if it breaks 75 and then sees that next leg up, which would be the ascending triangle playing out. And let me see here. I'm not sure what the all-time high is on this. Uh, oh, look at this, guys. This is interesting. All-time high, right about 80, 81 bucks. That was hit, what, five, six, seven years ago? Uh, yeah, 2014, July 2014. That's more like eight years ago at this point, nine years ago almost. Um, that's when that was hit, 81 bucks. And again, now we're in the mid-70s. Right at 75 is a big resistance on the four-hour chart. If we break this break this point, ascending triangle plays out, where do you think we're going? I think this goes 80 bucks. I think we fill that gap to 80 bucks, and that's why I'm watching it. You know, that's why I'm watching it. And from 75 to 80, I mean, that's not a huge window. So that could happen in a very short amount of time, which is why I'm putting it on your radar right now. So CLR, keep your eyes on it. Chewy is another one. C-H-W-Y. Let's pull that up. Chewy is one that I called out, I think a couple of videos ago, maybe last week, the week before, uh, probably last week. And you can see here, we have an inverse head and shoulders on it. Left shoulder, we got the head right here, right shoulder. And mind you, today Chewy's up about 8%. Very strong green day thus far here for Chewy. All it's got to do now, it's at 35.50. It's got to break 38. If 38 starts breaking, which is uh, right above the, the uh, you know the moving averages here on the four hour, also the high from earlier this month of October, about 10 days ago. If 38 breaks, we have a wide open uh, window here um, to to get to the mid to mid 40s at least in my opinion. Then if mid 40s breaks, 50 to 52. That was the high from the middle of August. So. I like Chewy here. I mean, it's it's not fully there yet, but again, $38, $40. If that breaks, we're going to be going higher, in my opinion. So the next stock here is Bank of America. We had some banks, financial institutions uh, report today. BAC is one of them. This stock is up 5% right now. It did EPS of $0.81 cents versus $0.77 cents estimated, so they beat EPS. And they beat revenue, 24.5 versus 23.6 billion. So it looks like the rally in the banks is continuing. We saw JPM last week, if you guys don't remember, which is up another 3% today. Wells Fargo was last week, which is up another 2.5% today. What else did we have last week? Uh, I think Citibank, uh, City, City reported. And this week we have, again, Bank of America, which I just showed you. I think tomorrow we have... Goldman Sachs. And then this morning, we also had Charles Schwab, which if I pull them up, SCHW is their ticker. They're actually down on the day. And this is one that's starting to take, um, you know, take a dump here under 69 bucks, which is not good. And you can see here, they ended up doing, well, you can't see it here. I'm going to tell you guys, they did EPS of $1.10 versus $1.05 estimated on revenue of $5.5 billion versus $5.41 billion estimated. So they double beat, same with Bank of America. But the thing here is, guys, with Charles Schwab, is they're breaking this multi-week uh, support, multi-month support. This was support from the middle of, middle beginning of August at about 69 70 bucks. And with today's earnings, even though they double beat, they're starting to break $69. We're starting to fill that gap to the downside, which there there might be some more work on the downside here for uh, Charles Schwab. Might be going to the mid-60s, 65-ish dollars. That was support on the 1st of August, early, early, early August. And if then, then if 65 breaks, 
we might have some more downside to about 61, 62. So, yeah, I mean, they did well. Just looking at EPS revenue, I'm not sure what the guidance was. But for Charles Schwab, they're just, uh, you know, they're, they're filling the gaps to the downside. So, if anything, this looks like it could be a short, if anything. Even though, full disclosure, I'm not shorting it right now, and usually I don't short stocks, that's what it's setting up to be, in my personal opinion, at least in the very short term. And as always, I'm not a financial advisor, guys. Please, please do your own research. Don't do anything based on my opinion. That's not smart to do. Not because I'm an idiot. Well, maybe I am an idiot, but but because you don't want to rely on anybody. That's the point. You don't want to you want to be able to be self-sufficient, self-sustaining. That's the point, right? That is really the point. And anything in life, really, but especially here, um, you know, in the stock market, you know, you don't want to have to rely on other people. So let's see what else is moving before we wrap the video up. Uh, Mercado Libre. Holy crap. Why is that up 10%? That's a big one. Uh, that's a big move here. So it's not really breaking out or anything uh, crazy. But if we zoom in on this, what we're noticing is a move off the bottom of this channel. You guys see this right here? If I see if I can get it right. Uh, there we go. You guys see that? This one actually might have some more room to the upside, especially if, uh, you know, 835 or more like 840. Let's say if 840 breaks, this could be breaking towards 900. No joke, guys. So what's the catalyst here? Let me set my alert at 840. What in the world is the catalyst for Mercado? So uh, I'm not seeing anything. It might just be one of those days where it's just getting a sharp relief rally, which to be honest, it's been in need of that because it went from 960 to 750 in just a couple of trading days. And that's a, you know, a dump of 21%. So it's, it's been in need of this relief rally. And right now, again, we're testing 840, which is right by the 50 SMA on this four hour chart, but also right by the highs from Friday. If I show you guys this five day chart, uh, you can see Friday and Thursday and Wednesday, uh, this thing failed at 840. So if it takes 840 out, whether we go to 900 or 850, I don't freaking know. I, all I know is we're going to get some short, uh, some sort of short-term move on Mercado Libre. Let's just put it that way, and uh, we'll leave it at that, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe. And if you want more content from me, more access to me throughout the day, exclusive morning update videos, check out the Patreon down below or go to stocksforfest.com slash Patreon. I also post all my buys, sells, call outs on there in real time. Check it out. And if you haven't gotten your 15 stocks for Moomoo yet, use that link, deposit at least hundred bucks and you get 15 stocks each up to 2000 bucks. And you could also get 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. And with that being said, cheers guys. I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.